Um, we're going to start the recording in just a moment. So Pamela, if you'd go ahead and get that going. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for attending the webinar. This is uh, our webinar on three steps to digital transformation. All in, it's win-win. And the three steps are awareness, alignment, and action. So before we get started, I'd like to talk a little bit about some housekeeping. So for those who might not have done a go-to webinar, that's the platform that we're using today. And there's some, you should have a control panel on your screen and it has a few noteworthy items on it. Uh, the questions log will be the most important probably. If you have any questions, if you're having any problems, post something in the question log there. And you can see that there's a response panel right there underneath it. Important to note, as I mentioned a minute ago, we are recording the presentation and it's being, um, it may be made available afterwards. The video will be made available. Pamela, our moderator, will be sending that information out at the conclusion of the webinar. So there's some copyright information. We'll also make the deck available. So we have to do with the obligatory copyright or Bravo and Innovative E and Edison and Microsoft, all the content that'll be here. To put some faces to names, Mike Taylor, president of Innovative E, that's me there on the left. And then there's Gino DeGrario. He's also will be presenting with me today. He's the president and CEO of Bravo Consulting. My background is with project management going back to the beginning of my career. Uh, also application development, management, uh, systems integration, all kinds of things that lead up to where we are today, which is this whole idea of digital transformation, which we're obviously deep in like a lot of other folks are these days. Gino, you want to give a quick hello to the folks and maybe a quick overview of, of your background? Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much, Mike. Yeah, uh, as Mike said, I'm Gino DeGregory uh, with Bravo Consulting Group. My background, I'm a, a software engineer, started off coding and developing uh, solutions in the late 90s, early 2000s. And, um, and throughout the years, everything has been on the Microsoft platform and have seen a lot of changes in the technologies and been helping a lot of our uh, customers in the past several years into a digital transformation. Hopefully you guys get a good information that you can take back to your folks. Great, thanks Gino. And you see on the right there that uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, Pamela is our moderator. So if you have any problems or questions, pop them into the question panel there. We'll also like to have folks, <coughs> excuse me, uh, ask questions, make it interactive. We are going to keep everyone muted so that we can move along. We have a lot to cover uh, in a short period of time, but we'll have a Q&A session at the, the back end. We also have some questions that were asked ahead of time, and we'll try to cover some of those. I don't know that we'll get to all of them, but we will make sure, we promise we'll follow up with everyone on all the questions and an opportunity to speak further after the webinar. So with that, a little bit about Innovative E, who we are. We are primarily a Microsoft partner. We hold multiple competencies, as you can see there. We work a lot in the content and collaboration, the portfolio management area, application development, analytics, business intelligence and reporting, all areas that are heavily touched with in the digital transformation space that we all find ourselves in today. And our mission is to partner, and that means partner with the best of breed technology providers like Microsoft, the, the best possible partners like Bravo. Uh, we work closely with them in, in multiple areas, including the government space. And then obviously partner with our customers to develop the solutions that continuously enhance value. And this, this idea of continuously enhancing value, I think is really important in the digital transformation era that we find ourselves. It's no longer the idea that you're gonna build something and it's just gonna run for a long time. There's gonna be a lot of apps that are being built. In fact, I was at the Microsoft Inspire conference for the partners last month and Satya Nadella put up a statistic that industry analysts believe there'll be 500 million new apps built in the next five years. That's more than the number of apps that have been built ever to date. And that's all part of this digital transformation initiative that just about everyone's going under these days. So with that, I'd like to also move forward and let Gino introduce Bravo Consulting Group. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. That's a lot of apps. <laughs> That's a lot of apps, man. Half a billion. Absolutely. So a little bit about uh, Bravo Consulting Group. We've been in business for almost uh, 12 years here in December. Um, uh, our, since, uh, since our inception, we've been focusing on providing Microsoft technology. So we know the ins and outs of 
of Microsoft and how it's been has been evolving throughout the years, throughout the decade. Um, our core competencies uh, are broken up into three areas, content services, cloud services, and analytics. Um, and then our solutions focuses on providing security compliance as we get folks onto the cloud and maintaining and supporting the cloud environments, as well as electronic records management. Uh, and, you know, with, with our, as you can see at the bottom, we have many years of experience implementing and deploying enterprise solutions and done um, the digital transformation. Uh, and that's it, Omas. All right. Thank you, Gino. So what is digital transformation? I'm actually going to leave this slide blank before I fit, push the button and fill in the actual definition that is uh, found on Wikipedia. So if anyone wants to pop in the, the question box there, if they have an answer of what digital transformation, that would be great. And we'll give everyone a second there, but I'll, I'll push the button here in a second. But in the in the meantime, it's important to note that what we're, we're doing today is talking about a subset of digital transformation. We'll talk about the focus areas in just a minute. But digital transformation is a very large topic. And there's really a lot of components to it, starting with the platform. There's cloud platform. There's a lot of initiation and building and moving forward with getting people to the cloud, getting organizations to the cloud refactoring existing applications, building new applications, all that work is going on these days. So really digital transformation, as it says, there's the novel use of technology. And the important piece is that it's new types of innovation. So you're really not looking at just as the second underline says, they're rat solving existing and traditional problems with new methods. You're really trying to, to come up with new innovation types. So that, the way that's manifesting itself these days is there's a whole lot of new tools that are available at the platform level and we'll be focusing on some of those today and giving you some some highlights on that there's also third-party applications that are still starting to evolve and what a lot of organizations are going to have to ask themselves is how much of this do we build ourselves how much do we work with partners to build and how much do we look to third-party applications to build the um the real challenge there is is making that differentiation of if we build it ourselves, that's great. But then, you know, if you build it, you you bought it, you you own it, and you have to continue to maintain it. And a lot of that turns into some of the discussions around uh, security, compliance, governance, process, which we'll we'll also try to cover today. Again, these are there's a lot of topics here. There's a lot of detail in it, but we're just trying to give you guys the kind of the overview of of some of the high points. So with that, as I mentioned, we're going to really talk about uh, a few different areas here. We're going to talk about um, the, the collaboration components and collaboration is a is a key piece. It's a fundamental piece of, of digital transformation strategies. It's a it's a it's been a fundamental piece of a lot of um, folks thinking over the last several years for those who've been involved with any SharePoint type initiatives uh, in the Microsoft space and then all the competitive products that have been out there. There was a, a, a realization about 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago that really there was the collaboration was was very uh, siloed among organizations and individuals. So these products have been developing over the years, and we'll actually talk about the the next evolution of those products a little bit today. But collaboration is kind of at the at the core of being able to really work better in a, in a, the new digital environment. The next piece, and this is something that's really kind of near and dear to our heart, is uh, innovation work and project management. The if you look at the what the industry analysts say, most information workers and information type work, which doesn't even have to be IT necessarily, I, I try to stay away from that, it's information workers in the business, which outnumbers the number of people in IT. About 50 or 60 percent of that type of work is non-repetitive work. In other words, it's it's working on trying to organize information and report information and, and manage and align different types of, of uh, data and, and in doing so those almost by definition become de facto projects now Are those all those people doing that work project managers? No most are not and in fact What we're seeing in the market is more of a move to more of what people are Microsoft and other folks are calling like citizen project managers uh, But it's still really important to be able to organize this work in ways that's meaningful So we'll talk a little bit more about that as well Then the other piece is security and compliance and governance yeah, so from a security compliance, so like the digital transformation, you know, it's, it, we've been helping 
um, our customers get to you know convert them to the cloud uh, as well as converting some of their ads. But one of the biggest aspects that has been um, um, very um, you know up in the news as it relates to cybersecurity is something that we are need to consider, and we'll be touching on on this and what that means as it relates to digital transformation because it's important not just to uh, do the data transformation from an application data and all that stuff, but then also security. And then how are we governing that once it's over or, uh, migrated and moved over? Uh, it's, it's very important to make sure that you know the evolution of and the adoption of uh, your solutions and applications are 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 consistent and, and grow appropriately. Yeah, Gina. So I just uh, just a question on that for you. So. I think when, what you're saying is, and, and help me out here, is that uh, when you have small work solutions, that the the need for for governance is probably not all that robust, right? If you have one or two people, like at a desktop app, but now with this digital transformation, we have more and more people working together. That the idea of getting some kind of governance and process around that is aware, as well as making sure that you're staying compliant from a security perspective of your data and your information, is becoming much more. Um, kind of to the forefront and, and much more important these days. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely you hit that nail on the head on, on, on the compliance piece, right? There's a lot of regulations and a lot of, especially in some of our government customers and some of the regulated industries that they need to make sure that they understand what that means to be compliant, right? Uh, there, there could be uh, several others that could impact your business. At the end of the day, if you're not making sure that it's your information, your data secured um, and, and, and keeping those threats away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you mentioned regulated industries and government is, is certainly one of those. We also work a lot in health and life sciences and the financial services industry. And obviously those are heavily regulated and we hear the same exact kind of things where, you know, compliance and security are, are absolutely paramount. Thanks. Yep. So areas of interest from this audience. It was awesome that a lot of the people that signed up actually filled out the form and asked some of the areas that they would be willing to um, ask you know what what they might be interested in learning and so I, we we took some of the select ones and put them there we're going to hit on some of these some of these we probably won't be able to get to we only have you know about 30 minutes left before a Q&A so we're going to get through a, a lot of additional content but we'd love to you know have additional conversations if people want to ask during the Q&A bring your question back up if yours on the list or if it's not that's fine um, and then we're also going to talk about how we might be able to engage and, and do a follow-up but we promise we'll, we'll We'll answer all, all to our best of our ability. So the three steps to success. As we talked about, the, the three fundamental pieces that we see and we've kind of formulated as what are the ways to start achieving digital transformation within your organization or awareness. So you have to be aware of the tools, the technology, you have to be aware of the existing processes and the governance. You have to be aware of the what the, the business drivers are, the strategy that, that your organization is trying to go after and where, where the pain points are. And so you have to kind of be aware of all of those things before you start undertaking these, these different uh, initiatives. And there's, there's ways to get there and we'll actually demonstrate some of that a little bit today. The next piece is the um, is the alignment piece, and after you become aware of the things that you want to do, you have to start getting aligned of what do we have, what are our resources to go after and and engage and and do these initiatives. So, do we have budget to do it? Is it something that's small enough we can do with an internal team? Um, it, how are we going to align to what we want to accomplish? Make sure everybody's on the same page before we actually go off and do it, and then obviously is the action piece, building a plan, take the action to, to build the, the solution and work on the sustainment and ongoing evolution of it. Because as we mentioned, these types of solutions are not static solutions that you, you know, one and done, you, you build it and, and forget about it. These are evolutionary types of applications and you know, productivity solutions that, that can be built, but they require ongoing evolution and, and attention. So really on the, uh, the awareness piece, um, we'll, we'll get into a little more detail here. So the idea of getting a lot of people involved is, is, really, is really critical here. 
So a lot of organizations we're finding are actually building out, whether informally or formally, innovation centers. There's even chief innovation officers and folks that are highly aligned with the organizational strategy, but also the concepts of employee uh, engagement to, to really get the most out of employees and even the broader constituents of an organization, whether you're a, a public entity where you're actually going out to your constituents, your taxpayers, your internal, if you're a, a private entity and your your partners and your other folks in your ecosystem, this collaboration idea or this concept is really much broader than just your organization. It, it goes out to your, you know, the broader ecosystem that's out there. And that's becoming, you know, from, from a, from a go to market for transformation. That's a, a really powerful concept. Now, how do you organize all that information is a, is a different, a different challenge. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And, and the one demo that we'll, we have time to do today, we'll actually talk a little bit about that. So the other piece is the, um, is the tools. And we talked about that and we'll show a little bit here with some graphics, the uh, evolving technology tool set that's available from Microsoft. And it's really exciting, the, the changes that they're making and really taking a huge step forward over the last four or five years. They've really built some, some platform and tool capabilities that are enabling this you know, digital transformation revolution. I think we are there somewhere around 800 million users now on Office 365. So it's not just the applications that come with it, it's all the underlying technology that enables um, integration productivity, uh, application building, and all those kinds of things. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but you have to understand which ones are, are right for the right, for the for the problems that you've identified under your ideation and, and challenges above. And then the other piece there is the policies and governance. And um, Gino, I think you're gonna say a word about that. Yeah, absolutely, so as you mentioned, with all the tools, you know, and, 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 and applications that are available and being created, you know, it goes back to again, is how, what are the policies with your organization that you need to be aware of, you know, and as you implement and build out your new governance uh, for your new environment is understanding and creating that roadmap, right, on what are the things that you need to, that, that first is important from an organizational culture perspective, and second, obviously what's important from a policy, uh, from a, compliance and regulations that we need to meet and that as well is um, uh, kind of figuring out what's available already in this platform so for example from a microsoft perspective there are a lot of uh, the security and compliance uh, dashboard and capabilities available to easily maintain and manage a lot of those things um, a lot of the policies and, and configurations for your organization so uh, just being aware of that as you're thinking about uh, the digital transformation not forgetting that security and, and compliance as well as governance is very important right and I think one of the things that over again is that in, to a certain extent you have to turn your head you're thinking around security always used to be an afterthought security and compliance and it was all right well we have to do this you know we've got this great idea but now we have to go make sure it's compliant I think one of the things that the platform brings is there's a lot of security that's already built into it and that's an enabler the thing that I think we're trying to emphasize here, uh, Gino, and if you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is that take those things into consideration as you're building these solutions, and that way you won't run into the blockers down the road. So make sure you're building the the compliance and you know as part of it, and that it's an iterative, it's not a, a big bang kind of thing that you're not trying to tackle everything at one time. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, that's 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 the key. Not forgetting um, that. Security is very important. The compliance is very important because it's going to cost you more uh, once you implement and do the transformation uh, down the road than than inclu including it as part of your uh, a plan of attack. Absolutely, great point. So what we want to talk about now? This is a the periodic table of Office 365 as um, developed originally in 2017 by one of the SharePoint MVPs out there. And you can see the ICANN SharePoint is and Jump to SharePoint are the, the folks to give them credit because this is a really thoughtful way to present all the different components that are available. So we're just touching on a few today, which include, we'll talk more in detail about Teams, uh, Power BI, Planner, a couple of the others, Flow, Power Apps, SharePoint Online. But we just wanted to give everyone a, an idea of all the capabilities that are there at the application level for the Microsoft platform. So it produces a, an, an amazing platform that it, that is secure, it's scalable. It works on all kinds of devices, virtually every type of device, mobile, as well as um, 
you know, obviously in the PC based type app or, or devices. And there's also, and we'll talk a little bit about this, there's this concept of the third party applications, which are really extending the, the platform. Now that you have a platform that has hundreds of millions of people in it, there's some best of breed applications that are purpose built around some specific areas. And, and Edison 365 is one of the leaders in this space. And we'll actually show one of their products in a couple minutes. So now we'll talk a little bit about Teams. Yeah, so so as, uh, I think Mike started with, you know, Satya was talking about so many apps out there, or half a billion, you said, or I'm sorry, what, what was it, half a billion, right? Yeah, in the next five years, it'll be half a billion, yep. That's crazy. So some of them, you know, with Microsoft really putting an emphasis on on our collaboration and communication, you know, Teams has been has been evolving, you know, um, the past few years, and it's really in the forefront now for, for what Microsoft has um, put out there for for all organizations as well. Uh, so as you can see, I kind of showed two, two screenshots here. It's, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Teams, but it's a, it's a collaboration platform from one single location where you can you know, co communicate and connect with your folks. Uh, it's really becoming the, uh, especially in our organization, the day-to-day and -day how we collaborate and communicate internally with our folks. Uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility in an organization of, of projects and, um, and, and tasks as well as, as documentation mainly, right? Uh, and a lot of, as well as the, the video conferencing, as you can see at the bottom right there. So you can do, do a lot of very powerful, not only on your desktop, but you can be very mobile and, and use it with your mobile device, uh, iPad, you know, um, and a very a surprise, I have an iPad and I, I do a lot of my communication and interactions with, uh, with my folks through that uh, when I'm kind of uh, moving around. But um, um, it's a very, very powerful tool. And especially from as you're looking into digital transformation, it's, it's tying it all together. It's like it you need to make sure that you're looking at all the different things, uh, especially from, um, from security and, and, and compliance. So anything you want to add there, Mike? Yeah, I was just going to say, so this, that's, that's great, Gino. I think what you're really hitting on there is that Teams is becoming kind of the, the work center for everyone and that, and that a lot of those other applications, we're seeing that in the productivity space and, and project management space, planner and project, project online, those things are being tied back in. People are wanting to surface the information back through Teams so that they kind of have that one-stop shop for their daily activities, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, perfect. All right. So the other, so, you know, we talk about the platform and being in Office 365 and 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 kind of having all this data in a sense from multiple applications and being able to serve it up and pull it and and represent it to to your users and in, um, in a nice way, in a, a data visualization way. And Microsoft has done a phenomenal job to to build a common data service architecture, as you can see there that. Um, you have your several apps on the top, you have your Power Apps, your Flow and Power BI that brings it all together and, and presents it in a, in, a, in a great way to, to your users. So, um, so there's a lot of things that you're looking from, a, as we look at the digital transformation, is, is understanding all those different apps and how we can bring it together to make sure that uh, this information not only makes sense, but it's easy, uh, easy to use at the end of the day. Right. And so from digital transformation, you know, if, if anyone's done, and I'm sure everybody's looked into it at least some point, um, any real research on what are the core components of digital transformation? One of the mo most important underpinnings is being able to have data sources where you can share data and do things that will allow for applications to work together and data to be exchanged. And I think that that's kind of, I think, um, you know, where the common data service really excels and that everything's kind of being put into that platform nowadays right absolutely yeah it's, it's uh you know being able to easily connect to multiple data sources is the key and then kind of uh making sense of all those different data sources and providing something that's presentable and easy for to make decisions right at the leadership level at the project level uh it's not just one uh area that you're pulling that information it's multiple and uh it, and it's making it easier now and uh, now uh, in the cloud Right, and I think that, that you know that that little piece that you have off there to the right, you know, the data connectors is going to be a really powerful part of that story as well, don't you? Yes, absolutely. I think they have what 230 connectors already to the partner apps that are available, something like that. Yeah, that's correct. 
Yeah, that's great. Cool. Um, the other thing is uh, just, again, I keep harping on the security and compliance, something that we, we do a lot. Just click one more time, Mike. Um, the, um, just if you remember one of the things that you know from this from this presentation is is uh, from a secure perspective please keep that in mind you know because um we just a little background um we do a lot of work also in the federal space with the intelligence community and you know um there's no longer you know we are a lot of the war fighting now is everything is cyber now so we a lot of organizations are being you know attacked um and, and a lot of people don't know it so uh, the emphasis on making sure that security and compliance is part of your digital transformation is very critical. Uh, protecting from threats, protecting from data leaks, you know, in your organization, or even and making sure that the control uh, is um, of the data and you have the right people accessing the right things. Um, I'm sure, some most of you guys have been seeing the, the improvement in multi-factor authentication um, in in many areas. So that's just a simple change that, that helps a lot in making sure that your environment is protected. Um, but we really wanted to emphasize in this in this presentation that um, it's, it's becoming very critical and, and you need to make sure that you keep it in the forefront as part of your design and architecture of your of your where you're trying to take your applications, your app your that you build custom or that you are leveraging for that's available for uh, for Microsoft. Yeah, absolutely. So now what I want to do is is talk a little bit about um, there's there's so many different areas we could go but since we started at the top with the the concept of building ideas as the, the kind of the top of the funnel for digital transformation so uh, there's actually a product that Edison has out there that manages ideas and it sits on top of the Office 365 platform so it's a it's a it's a, an enhancement product which enhances the way it works and allows you to, as you see there, align your business, your ideas to strategy, whether it's business or public sector, you know, private or public sector. Uh, it allows you, as I mentioned before, to do things like open innovation. So you can go outside of your organization. You can go to large, large constituents of or, or large pools of, of resources and, and people to, to gather information. You can empower your employees to drive innovation. So this is not just about employee engagement from a knowledge and improving your organization, but it's also about it, it, it can become a powerful retention policy, a, a retention type of um, driver as well. And then you can objectively evaluate ideas rather than, you know, you know what, what has everybody feel about something. You actually have some real input, both from a, in, from a, you know, analytics that you're getting back from the um, ratings that you're getting, this, so there's so, social capabilities built in and, and other things like that. So we don't have a lot of time, but I just thought I'd give you guys a real quick overview of the uh, uh, oh, out of here a second ago. Uh, there it is. Well, I had it. I had it queued up. So just one second. Sorry about that. Somehow that window got closed. Here we go. All right. It always happens when it's right <laughs> when yeah. we're doing presentations. We need to do a demo and then somehow yeah. that browser got closed. Probably cleaning up my desktop. So what you see here is Edison Ideas. So you'll notice that there's uh, a menu across the top. So you've got home, discover, personal, triage, reports, and admin. What's kind of cool here is you've got some quick stats. So the concept is that you have challenges and challenges are things that could align to strategy. So you have a strategy to uh, increase um, compliance or, or decrease uh, wait time for a customer. And then people can submit ideas against it. So you have a bunch of challenges that have been added. You have a bunch of ideas that have been submitted. You have different states for the ideas. Some are under review, awarded, different things like that. But this shows you what's happened there. And then the ones that are successful means that they've been awarded. So they're going to move further down the funnel. So they're for further consideration or for execution. You could move them right into an idea that's been awarded directly into it's time to go, you know, have a project or a small initiative to go implement whatever this idea is or, or, or um, a combination of ideas. So there's ways to combine ideas and do all this other stuff 
um, through here. You also see a slider here, which enables you to, um, this is all customizable. You can brand this for your organization, or you could, um, if you want to do open innovation for, um, you know, for a kind of a, an anonymous kind of thing, you could you could brand it to, to whatever you wanted it to be for whatever the particular initiative was. You can put graphics in here that drive information or drive um, kind of relevant points home. So down here, you see the actual challenges that have been put out. There's different ways to filter and, and rate them um, and, and, and view them by like how many days are available. And then under here, you have like the, the ideas that are actually against the, well, the ones that say challenge ideas. It's interesting you see here, this is actually an idea that's been issued against a challenge. You also can have users can just go enter ideas. They don't have to enter something against a challenge. So it's very flexible. The system is very open and flexible for people to use. Then you have things like this um, scoring. So you can go in and people can just do star ratings. So it makes it super easy to use. And not to get too far off topic, but this, this is also what's really interesting about ideas is it can be customized to be um, an intake, a, a, a project intake type of thing. So there's actually views of ways people are using it and, and we've done it several times. And I know Edison has a lot of companies that are doing it for like IT and, and project demand intake. So you can just change the name of, you can change challenge to project. You know, we need a project to do, um, you know, let's just pick one of these, uh, reduce customer questions, improve or cues, improve the checkout time, right? So. Um, we needed a project for that, and then you, know, you could go issue actual ideas against the project and, and come up with what you want to do, what you want to accomplish there. So there's some there's some can reports that are available. I've, I've only got one here today. This just kind of gives you a heat map. Um, this uses Microsoft Power BI, like we talked about. And so what it's doing is it's surfacing the information of all the ideas that are out there. And um, there's also a funnel view. I just don't have it configured in this one, but you can go in. These are interactive dashboards that you can go in and drill in, and you can even query Power BI's. For those who haven't seen it, it's very powerful. Um, it's a, a low-cost, very powerful solution that Microsoft provides as part of the, the 365 platform. So again, this is the idea that, or the concept that the data is all um, usable across applications. So because because it's a 365 platform and add-on, all that data is available, and then it can just be consumed through the and, and reported through Power BI. And you can build your own reports and, and do all kinds of cool things with it as well. So going back over here, so um, just to show a couple other things, when you go into an idea itself, you can actually go look at the idea. You can do um, interesting things with it. People can collaborate on the idea. They can, you can see what stage it's under, how many reviews it's had. This one's only had one. Um, there's, you know, there's some history and details. There's a discussion. You can embed, embed a Yammer thread if that's available to you. Um, might not be available to all customers, but um, you can edit, review it. You can combine ideas. So if you have multiple ideas and people say, well, that's really the same thing that this other person came up with, you can combine them. You can look at history, do all those kinds of things. One of the really interesting things you can also do is this concept of idea triage. So you can go in and look at the ideas that have been submitted, and you can see here what the idea is, kind of the stage that it's in, under review, draft, awarded, under review, um, the different areas there. And then you can see these areas that you're evaluating the idea across the top. Now, all of this, again, is fully configurable. So these are just some common things that we see. So you've got risk, cost reduction, competitive advantage, increased revenue, those kinds of things. So if I wanted to go in and say, you know, I see as the challenge owner, I'd say, well, um, this one here, the, the improve experience, PM experience, um, you know, I think that this is actually a little less risky. So that's, um, I'm going to move that down a little bit. And you notice that the the score, I mean, first of all, it, it, it highlighted this. So it's very graphical, very visual, it highlighted it and let you know that you know, there's some changes being done here because it changed the color. And it said, when I reduced the score here, the, the average score actually went up and that's because risk is an inverse indicator. So it's actually defined to be inverse, lower score is actually better. Um, um, so it increases the, the overall score. And then if you did something like competitive advantage, say, you know what, I think this is really going to give us a lot more competitive advantage. You see it go up and then you can go over here and you can save it. And then that, that idea has been updated. Um, one of the other things I wanted to mention is all of these, um, this is a fully, it's a fully modern design. So like we were talking about before with teams, the, the ideas product and edit, all the Edison products work with um, any device anywhere so it's all mobile enabled card friendly so if you were to look at this on a 
an iPad, like Gina was saying, or on a on your phone, it would switch to card mode and, and be able to surface that information really simply that way. So just wanted to give a quick overview of ideas. Hopefully that was a, a little bit helpful. And then move back into um, kind of where, well, let's go back to full screen mode. All right. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about alignment. So we talked about the three steps. So you had awareness, alignment, and action. And we're gonna kind of talk through these a little bit and um, and then hopefully we'll get to some Q&A here real quickly. So alignment, so what's realistic? So once once you determine that you have an idea that is you wanna move forward with, say, well, now, do we actually have the, the resources to do this? Do, do we have everybody on board? Is management on board? Are we ready to move forward with actually building this? So you need to kind of evaluate those different pieces. Um, there is another piece of the Edison Edison product suite called Business Case, which will allow you to do this, or a lot of people will actually go off and have their own like spreadsheets and ways to do it. But you need to evaluate what the effort costs and resources are gonna be. And, and then also, like Gino was saying, you, you have to take into con in consideration your security and compliance. Can, am I able to build this thing? Am I able to share this information with external entities? Those kinds of things. Then there's the adoption component, right, Gino? That's correct. Yeah, sorry, I had to, <laughs> had to come out of mute there. Um, the uh, so from an adoption and change management, that is a you know for any um, digital transformation as you're moving things, you're going to start looking at different apps. And uh, from what we have experienced with our customers, it's throwing everything to your users. Um, it's a it's failure. I mean, people are not going to you know don't don't really understand uh, some of the changes and and some of the applications that are coming out. So being very uh, strategic and, and thorough about how uh, change management is going to be dealt uh, as part of your execution uh, is very important uh, because at the end of the day, you know, investments are being made to, to, to transform this, you know, the environments to the cloud and stuff like that. And you need to make sure that the, you, the adoption is there and is being, being utilized appropriately, right? So there's a lot of things to, to align as you're working with uh, uh, with your, uh, your project to make sure that um, you take baby steps. Uh, there's uh, communication that is very important uh, when you're, you're you're rolling out a new application. Let's say you you take you know you implement an idea as a solution into your organization. It's, it's very critical to to make sure that you know there's a plan of attack on how you're going to send information to your users, to your administrators, how we're going to be managing all that stuff, as well as you know, uh, uh, highlighting some of the main functionalities and components of, of, of those things to be successful. So all in all, it's, it's, it's very important. Uh, adoption and change management is very important to make sure you're successful with your project. Yeah, that's great. And what I hear you saying there, Gino, is that you actually kind of need to bake it into the, the adoption and change management's part of the process most of the time. You're not doing it as an afterthought. You go build these things just like security and compliance, right? You don't just build it and then go out and say, well, is it secure? Um, you don't go build it and say, is it going to be adopted? You you kind of you involve your stakeholders in it, and you make sure that they're part of the process of building it and and deploying it, and make you know that they're involved the whole way, so that they understand how they're going to be able to use it to to maximize the adoption, and then build the change management as a um, make sure there's a, a, the appropriate amount of formal change management around it, so things don't get broken. It's, that's that's kind of right. Yeah. Absolutely, that, that's that's where you know things are moving, and I appreciate you kind of bringing it all together because you know it's not it's no longer it's like let's buy it off the shelf, plug it in, you know, and maybe send folks to to training sessions. No, it's it's very strategic. It's it's now it's let's incorporate it as part of you know you got what are the the the, the users that that we're targeting and need to understand the different levels of functionalities that are appropriate to to those individuals. So it's uh, definitely needs to be incorporated as part of the uh, the overall implementation. Right. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. And so for the path forward and gaining consensus, I think one of the things that seems to have emerged over the last several years is moving away from the concept of, you know, big bang type approach to, you know, all kinds of initiatives and digital transformation is part of this. Now, certain components of it, like the, the building the actual platform and migrating large amounts of things over your, your exchange users to 365, moving your SharePoint, SharePoint Online, these big things where you have to move things, the lift and shift type activities and, and building, and sometimes there's still hybrid capabilities and, and things that are in place where you still have to have some things on-prem, and all of those things typically are larger initiatives that are kind of 
you know, a larger, they have to be planned out because they affect everyone or a large number of people in the organization. But when you're actually going after some of these, you know, department level, and they may be enterprise wide, but they don't affect necessarily everyone in the enterprise, like project and portfolio management. That's one of our, you know, sweet spots that we, we work with a lot. You, you have to think about working this in more of an iterative type fashion because the big bang approach doesn't necessarily work and the, and the beauty of the new platform is that it gives you the ability to to do that to kind of dip your toe in work with a little bit of automation maybe some workflow maybe do a little bit of you know planning using something like planner and then for the more advanced users for and again i'm, I'm using our <laughs> our wheelhouse but like project and Microsoft Project Online and put some of those planner tasks into project so you can surface all the information together through something like Power BI, but do it in an iterative fashion, solve a small number of problems, and then start to do the gaining consensus is gaining consensus at two levels. It's with your, your user base and the people that are using the system, and that goes right back up to the adoption that Gina was just talking about. But the other piece that's equally as important, both of these are equally important, is gaining consensus and buy-in from the executives and management, because as we've talked about, these solutions require some level, whether it's internal or external, they require ongoing care and feeding for the, the sustainment and, and growth and evolution to continue to, to meet the organizational value proposition that has been promised and potentially grow it. So if you don't have that investment, if you're not, people aren't allocated to it or you don't have the investment of, you know, whatever it takes to, to maintain this, whether it's internal or external, um, then and, and that, that investment comes from management, right? They have to see the the value. So seeing that value allows for that evolutionary approach in that next iteration. Okay. So really the, uh, so now we're getting to the action slide. So once, once you have consensus and you're ready to move, you have to execute. So I was just kind of, this, this dovetails off the last piece I was talking about is building iterative solutions on MVP mentality. And for those who aren't familiar, this isn't most valuable player in this context. This is uh, the minimum viable product, which is kind of an, uh, an idea that came from the agile uh, IT type area. But it really, it works in any type of solution building where you think about um, building something that, that meets a, a small number of requirements. And it may, you may have some very advanced requirements, but you might not go after those initially. You want to build something that actually can be show value quickly. And so build something on this MVP mentality and then if it if it's working then continue to iterate it some of these solutions may not always work right i mean that's another thing you have to understand is when you go build things maybe well that, that's useful but it's just not worth the overhead so let's not do that so if you if you do it on an mvp mentality then you've built something with the minimal investment of time and, and energy and, and, and money and whatever resources you're using and if you decide not to use it then you haven't you know spent a lot of these resources for something that's not going to be used so i think that's a, an important part there and would you say uh, that the you know uh, tying it back to the um, the alignment is, is is important from an execution as the MVP is tied to the, the adoption right the the smaller pieces you get it out and and start having your users utilizing and providing feedback it makes it more of a powerful you know implementation and adoption throughout the life cycle would you agree? Oh, absolutely. And in, and in many ways, what, what's happening is organizations, what we're, we're talking about here is adopting a, a principle that's been in, in effect for many years. When you think about like Silicon Valley and big technology firms, Microsoft, everybody that's out there, that's that's the, the folks who are most successful do that, right? They put out a product that they want to hear back from the market. They want to say, is this working? And if it is, that's great. We'll continue to, to support those features. If it's not, we will replace it with other features. And internally to organizations, you're going to, you're going to be building and buying these, these apps that, that do those things. So I think you're right on there. Absolutely. And then the same concept too with, with Protect, you're looking at the Protect and Automate, the, you know, highlighting again security and compliance, how important it is. But it's, it's, it's also, you have to be very um, uh, careful how the whole change management and implementation. So you can't just say, you know, we're going to turn everything off, nobody has access, and I'm going to slowly, you know, you get your, your users are going to go up in arms and then I can't do my job, my day to day. So with that, also looking at how we going to go about protecting our environments and our digital transformation. You need to think about it in a um, very MVP approach. You know, maybe we start with, you know, our, our goal is to get to 100%, but we start with, uh, you know, getting it, you know, 10% now, you know, in the next quarter, you know, 50%. And look at the different things. And and, and the platform in Microsoft allows it to to give you um, um, kind of the scoring uh, on on your 
how your environment is being secured and it does a good job in, in making sure that it's there. So uh, the, the point of this is making sure that you are looking at and protecting it in a very um, kind of MVP way, agile approach as well. Yeah, that's great. And the last step there is kind of the sustain piece. And so when we talk about sustain, probably could have a graphic here that would help but if you think about solutions they can start very small and then grow um, whether it's in scope or number of users the, the the analogy i like to use or the the scenario i like to use is actually just talking to a customer about this yesterday is they they are trying to manage things and they're using spreadsheets and some some microsoft project desktop type stuff and they're they're doing it themselves for a whole group of folks and they want some other people to start being involved so you know, they're deciding, do I want to share these files with people in something like a team site? So if you have one person who's doing it, you know, the support and maintenance mechanisms are pretty simple, right? If it's you, you're doing it. Um, if you share it with somebody else, now you've, you've doubled the, the amount of considerations you have because you have to say, all right, now who's, who, who, who can change what in this file, right? Um, now, if you, you go and put in 20 people or 100 or 200 people, you have to really start thinking about um, how do we support all those folks? And so, Part of this is what we've already been talking about is, is built into the change management of going with an MVP type approach. And part of it is also following, you know, digital transformation brings a lot of great capabilities, but there's some there's some traditional ways of, of managing things that still very much apply. Like Gino mentioned before, change management, security and compliance, these things do. The, me the support and mechanism co components are the same too. You, you wanna have folks who are kind of your, Oftentimes your power users, your core team that can really understand the solution you've deployed and they're your first line of defense. Your, your technology people have to be involved. You may have to actually have a support group um, if it's a large and complicated system that you end up building. And you wanna make sure that those mechanisms are in place uh, if it's your internal support desk. So you, you need, and you need to do that as part of your, each iteration that you do. So every time you make a change, you say, all right, how's this change gonna affect the, the user population out there? And if you have 200 or 2000 users out there, and you make a small change, it may seem like not much to the folks who are making the change, but it could be a big, a big change in the way people do their work or the way that they, you know, adopt the system. So you need to make sure those mechanisms are in place and, 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 and available for everyone and that they understand that they're in place. Good. I think that pretty much wraps us up. I think looking at the time, we're, we're pretty much on time. We've got about 10 minutes. So we wanted to see if there were any questions if anyone wanted to post any questions to the question panel in the the control panel there in the go to webinar panel um, while we're waiting for anyone to do that also wanted to know that we are scheduling appointments we will be following up as i mentioned pamela will be sending the the recording of this video and the deck to all the attendees we'll try to follow up on those questions if there are any we'll go back through them and see if there are any we missed there's probably a couple that we could enhance a little more or and or we could um you know, we can have some free consultations with folks. So if anyone wants to schedule a consultation with us, our experts, we're, we're happy to do so. We'd love to talk with you more or just, you know, general consultation more about the web that you might have. There's also a great HBR, uh, Harvard Business Review book that'll be available and we'll make the details available of, of how you would get that. But anybody, basically anybody who schedules a, an appointment with us, we'll give you a free copy of that book and it covers a lot of how you build applications. There's a whole section on there around business case, which is really good, which is kind of the next stage after the ideation, which we, we showed of how you build good business cases and best practice around that. So that would be a, uh, a, nice, a nice thing for you to have. Um, are there any questions? Looking at the panel here, I don't see any. I think we answered all the questions already in our slides. What do you think? That's still good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll just give it another second here. Don't see any questions coming in. Nope. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and um, end the webinar then. And again, if anyone has any questions afterwards, feel free to follow up or if you want to schedule a consultation, that'd be great. Thanks everybody for attending. Thanks, Gino, for helping out co-presenting. Thanks, Mike, and thank everybody. Appreciate everybody have a great day. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.